Imagine you are taking a tour of a factory that manufactures energy drinks. You may see that there is a central unit that manufactures the liquid base of the drink. And then the drink is split into different batches. To each batch different flavors may be added, preservatives may be added etc. And then the drink is then bottled in cans like this and to these cans labels may be stuck. And then the cans can be packed into carton boxes and be transported to different stores from where we can purchase them. Why am I telling you this? What does an energy drink making factory got to do with the endomembrane system? Well, believe it or not, but there is a similar process that happens inside our cells as well. Except the cells don't produce energy drinks, but they produce proteins, lipids and other substances. You may not believe me yet, but you will by the end of the video. Now what is the endomembrane system? That is the system responsible for the production of proteins and lipids in the cell. And it is made up of a series of interconnected cell organelles. And we know that eukaryotic cells have different cell organelles that perform different functions, right? The endomembrane system includes those organelles that are somehow connected and perform a coordinated function. So the different organelles that make up the endomembrane system may be directly linked to one another forming a structural linkage like a physical linkage between two organelles or they may be functionally linked to one another with the help of vesicles. Now we will get to vesicles in just a while. The components of the endomembrane system include the endoplasmic reticulum or ER, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes and vacuoles. In this video, we are going to focus on the endoplasmic reticulum. We will talk about Golgi apparatus, lysosomes and vacuoles in another video. So let's start off with the nucleus. Wait, the nucleus? Weren't we supposed to start with the endoplasmic reticulum? Why am I talking about the nucleus? Well, that's because when we talk about the protein synthesis process, the first step in that process happens inside the nucleus. The nucleus contains DNA. And the DNA is made up of genes. Genes are different parts of DNA that code for specific proteins. And by coding, I mean they contain the information or the recipe needed to make proteins. So from DNA, a molecule called mRNA is synthesized. Specifically from genes, the molecule of mRNA is synthesized. Now this mRNA molecule acts as a blueprint for protein synthesis. Why can't DNA itself be used as the instruction manual to make proteins? Well, two reasons. DNA cannot leave the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm where the actual protein synthesis takes place. Secondly, it's very important. It's the genetic material that contains all the genetic information that has to be passed down to generations together. If it reaches the cytoplasm, it may get degraded in the cytoplasm. That's too much of a risk for the cell to take. So instead, the DNA sends its messenger, quite literally, the messenger mRNA into the cytoplasm for the production of proteins. So the mRNA leaves the nucleus through these small openings called nuclear pores which are present on the nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane. Now the nuclear membrane is a membrane that covers the entire nucleus. This nuclear membrane can be thought of as the starting point of the endomembrane system. Why? Because it doesn't just cover the nucleus and end there. It's a continuous membrane that after covering the nucleus forms a series of folded tubules and sacs known as the endoplasmic reticulum. Now the reticulum means a network and endoplasmic means inside the cytoplasm. So the endoplasmic reticulum is a network of connected tubules and sacs that are just extensions of the nuclear membrane. Now under the microscope, some parts of the endoplasmic reticulum have a very rough appearance. That's because of the presence of ribosomes. So the part of the endoplasmic reticulum that has ribosomes is called rough endoplasmic reticulum or RER. And ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. So the mRNA that has left the nucleus comes to the ribosomes where proteins are synthesized. There is a part of the endoplasmic reticulum that lacks the ribosomes. That part is known as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Naturally, because ribosomes are not present, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is not involved in protein synthesis. Instead, it is involved in lipid synthesis. 
so the RER or the rough endoplasmic reticulum is for synthesizing proteins and the SER or the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is for synthesizing lipids. Whatever needs to be synthesized in the cell or manufactured in the cell happens in the endoplasmic reticulum. So the endoplasmic reticulum is the central manufacturing unit of the cell. So what happens to the mRNA when it reaches the RER? So it reaches the RER and goes to the ribosomes where the ribosomes use the mRNA blueprint to produce proteins. Well, the proteins produced by the ribosomes are not fully functional yet. They are just a linear chain, a straight chain of protein molecules much like a beaded necklace. In that form, the protein cannot function properly. One more thing about the protein is it's still in the endoplasmic reticulum. It is still not been taken to its address or its target location where it, the protein is needed. So the protein can be thought of as a raw protein. So the protein needs to be made into a functional form before it can leave the ER. That is what is done as the proteins pass through the different infoldings of the RER known as cisternae. So the cisternae can be thought of as the sari pleats that we take when we drape a sari. The pleats that we take in, out, in, out. Like that, cisternae can be thought of as those interconnected tubules and sacs. So the protein manufactured as the ribosomes passes through the cisternae during which it gets folded into its three-dimensional shape. Now this three-dimensional shape is important for the protein to function properly. Additionally, some proteins may require some changes or modifications to function properly. Those modifications can be like addition of sugars or lipid molecules to the proteins. If a sugar is added, then the protein is called a glycoprotein. If a lipid is added, then the protein is called a lipoprotein. So as the protein moves through the gaps between the cisternae, it is folded into its three-dimensional shape and sugars and lipids and other molecules may be added to it. So this is like the part of the manufacturing plant where different flavors are added to the energy drink and different preservatives are added to the energy drink to make it drinkable. So this endoplasmic reticulum, the RER, is the manufacturing plant and also the modification plant. So once the protein reaches the end of the RER, it is somewhat functional, but it still doesn't know where to go. That process of sending the protein to where it needs to go is handled by the Golgi apparatus. Now we've talked a lot about the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but what about the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Like I mentioned, it produces lipids. Lipids, for example, like waxes and steroids in your body are produced at the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Or whatever is produced in the endoplasmic reticulum, RER or SCR, has to go to the Golgi apparatus next so that it can be sent to their target locations. But here is the catch. The endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus are not linked to each other structurally. Like the endoplasmic reticulum and the nuclear membrane is linked to each other, the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi are not linked to each other. How then the proteins and lipids can be transported to the Golgi apparatus? Well, here is where vesicles come into the picture. After the protein is modified and is at the end of the endoplasmic reticulum, it is packed inside vesicles. Vesicles are nothing but tiny sacs of the membrane itself that makes up the endoplasmic reticulum. And by membrane, I mean the phospholipid bilayer that makes up the endoplasmic reticulum that pinches off or buds off and contains the protein inside. Now, these small sacs called vesicles then move to the Golgi apparatus where more modifications are done and the proteins can be sent to their target locations. Depending on the function of the cell, the distribution of the RER and SER differs. So the RER is responsible for protein synthesis, right? Some of those proteins are secreted outside the cell or sent out of the cell. Such proteins called secretory proteins can be found in the cells of the stomach, intestines and glands. The stomach and intestines produce enzymes which are basically proteins needed for the digestion of food. So those proteins need to be synthesized out of the cell. And glands like the pancreatic glands produce insulin which is again a 
protein hormone those hormones need to be synthesized out of the cell such cells that produce more of proteins than other cells have more numbers of rough endoplasmic reticulum and naturally ribosomes as well some cells like the cells in the testes ovaries and liver produce more lipids or steroids so the testes produces testosterone which is a steroid hormone ovaries produce progesterone and estrogen which are again steroid hormones so these cells the secretory cells in the testes and ovaries need to produce more lipids so those cells will have more numbers of ser in them now how these cells secrete the proteins and lipids well that's a story for another video